Hello, this is Afol L. Banson and welcome to the Young Achievers Network. I would like you to give me the thumbs up, share this video with your friends, subscribe to my channel and click on the notification bell so that whenever we upload motivational content, which is every day, you will be the first to get the notification. Today we are looking at passion. And this is one of the most powerful ingredients for success. Passion. So what is passion? Passion is the force that consumes, energizes, and fills you with an obsession and drive to grow, become more, and achieve more. So first of all, passion is a force. It is a force, and this force consumes you. When you are passionate about something, that energy, that emotion consumes you. Secondly, it energizes you. It gives you energy to go after what you want. It fills you with an obsession and drive to grow. Because you are in pursuit of something, you grow, you develop, you read, you study, you educate yourself. You expand yourself so you can achieve what you are going after. And this obsession drives you to grow and become more so you can achieve more. You see, there is no greatness without the passion to be great. And there is no success without the passion to succeed. Passion is an amazing force. And that is why it is important to have your 10 year vision or plan for your life. So that becomes your passion for the next 10 years. And you drive yourself towards that passion. So what is the purpose of passion? Where does passion come from? And how can we use it to drive ourselves towards our dreams and our aspirations for this year and the coming 10 years and the rest of our lives? Because living a passionate life will give you a life of fulfillment, a life of excitement, a life of wonder, of thrill and a life full of energy. Where does passion come from? Number one, passion comes from a deep sense of purpose or meaning in life. In other words, your passion is connected to your purpose. So the question is, why are you on this earth? And don't tell me I am here to worship God. We are all here to worship God. The question is, why are you specifically, you, Jonathan, Kwesi, Kwame, Mercy, Ajua, Caleb, Zlatan, whatever your name is, why are you specifically on this earth? What is your purpose? Because your purpose will tell you what you should spend your life pursuing. Your purpose will give you an indication of what talents you have. And in one of the future podcasts, we will look at identifying your purpose and identifying your talents. Secondly, Robert Kiyosaki says, passion is born out of love and hate. There is a love for something you really want and a hatred for its opposite. So when you have passion and your passion is to create wealth, you hate poverty. If your passion is to create jobs, you hate unemployment. If your passion is to play soccer, you may not like basketball. So with passion, you love something and you hate something else. If you have a passion for work, you hate laziness. If you have a passion for laziness, you hate work. So passion is born out of love and hate. And third one, passion comes from the environment we often dwell in. If you live in an environment or in a country like Brazil, where soccer is the national sport, you are likely to have an intense passion for soccer. If you live in a country like Switzerland, where skiing is one of the national passions, you are likely to love skiing. If you are in Jamaica, where athletics is one of the national passions, you are likely to love athletics. So the environment we dwell in 
the friends we surround ourselves with and the passions of those friends and the passions in those environments will determine the passion we have. So how do we generate passion? Sometimes you find yourself in a job that you don't really like and you want to quit as soon as you can. But there seems to be no way. There's no employment opportunity and you just have to keep on grinding in that place. How do you develop a passion for that work you are doing while looking for the opportunity to resign and move to what you really love? Perhaps you are a teacher and you despise the work. You no longer have a love for the work. Or you don't just don't like the work. You got into it because you needed a job, a way to make ends meet. But that is not really your passion. Maybe you love music and entertainment and you want to move into that. Or you love boxing, so you want to go into that. But there seems to be no avenue. How do you develop a passion for the work you are doing now so that you can later transfer that passion to the new thing? Now keep in mind that passion is transferable and it can be contagious. So how can we generate passion? Number one, look at the personal benefits you can derive from what you are doing now. Look at what you are doing now in this job that you hate. What are the personal benefits you can derive from it? And look at how these benefits will help you in the future. What personal benefits are you deriving from the work you hate now? And what can those benefits do to help you in the future? Because these benefits will strengthen you and they must transcend material gains. You cannot just limit the benefits to just finance or what financial benefits you are getting from the workplace, even though that's one of them. You must look at other benefits. What skills can you develop in this workplace and use in the future? What courses are they offering in your workplace and be sponsored by the school to read and use in the future? What courses, what meetings and training programs are available that you can use? When I was teaching at Chapel Hill in St. Peter's, they would often say, Mr. Banson, there's a program here we want you to attend. And even though there were many other teachers, they will always send me. And I took advantage of it. And I would go and I would study and I would make notes. Mr. Banson wants you to do this and I'll go and do it. And over the years, I developed skills and abilities. And now, running my own music school, these skills and abilities are now at my advantage. And I'm using them to grow my business. So don't just go through the motions looking for the way out, but get some benefits that goes beyond material benefits from your current place of work. Number two, spend time studying how skillful people are doing what you are doing. If you want to be a soccer player, spend time watching what soccer players are doing and start working on that. Watch as many videos as you can. You want to be a singer, you want to be a blogger, you want to be a software developer. Steady, watch videos, listen to interviews and learn what they are doing. One of the things I'm doing currently is I'm learning a lot about the richest man in the world, Elon Musk, because of his work ethics. He's managing three companies, SpaceX, Tesla, SolarCity. And I'm learning about his work ethics. And I'm trying to develop strong work ethics so I can bring it into my business. Number three, change your attitude towards what you are doing. Don't look at your current place of employment as drudgery. There are benefits. Open your eyes and use that place to toughen yourself, become stronger and become better. Because if you don't do that and you are to stay there for the next three, four or five years, are you telling me you are going to live a miserable life for the next three, four or five years? You can't live like that. Change your attitude towards what you are doing. Approach your work with an aim to leave a positive mark. Determined to leave an unforgettable mark where you are so that when you leave, they will miss you. Number four, 
intentionally smile and change your posture when you are doing your work. How you use your body will affect how you feel about something. So intentionally smile. Smile on purpose. Work with a smile on purpose. Not because everything is good, but you want to change your attitudes and the way you do what you are doing. So I have a few questions for you in closing. What are you passionate about? Take some time and think about the things that you are passionate about and write them down. Number two, how would you approach your walk with God if you were passionate about Him? Three, how would you relate to your family if you were passionate about them? How would you relate to your wife, your husband, your children if you were really, really passionate about them? Four, how would you approach your work if you were passionate about it? Finally, how would you live your life if you were passionate about living? Don't just live a life going through the motions. Live with passion. This has been Afol L. Banson, and this is the Young Achievers Network. Give me a thumbs up, share with your friends, and make sure that this year you live with passion and you'll be shocked at what you will achieve because passion is one of the ingredients for champions. Sayonara. <laughs>